Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Oh, the exposure locked in. It's uh, four minutes into the 28th day of October. We've got a train coming by, so you will be hearing a whistle very soon. Or, or horn. Not a whistle. Trains don't have whistles anymore. Although they are kind of whistles because they are air horns. So an air horn is a whistle. Oh. Just uh, finished listening. To, well, no, finished. Once I listen to Lionel. I do a normal, uh, a fair amount of about an hour or so of uh, uh, one long horn. Two long horns. Short horn. Very long run. I mean, it's probably just it's, cro it's crossing the street. Cro it's the, this, the, the the rail crossing. Sounds like it's coming this way, but I'm not really too sure because I'm not sitting in the right direction to sort of really sort of. Uh, uh, Rectify the issue that, uh, or or ensure that the issue that it's coming in this direction. But that's kind of how things work. You, you're not necessarily sure about things, and because everything right now is coming from the right waveguide. Both the east and westbound trains are coming from that direction. I haven't really heard anything from the uh, from the left waveguide, uh, which would be uh, things that are going eastbound, but. I've been rather quiet, so. Anyways, I just gotta do some adjustment here to sort of get this situated properly. Let's see if we can get this done. There we go. Lights in the background don't work. Don't work well for. Uh, don't work well for exposure in terms of how things uh, end up being filmed uh, and what you see on camera. That's what you have to be careful as you that. If you are vlogging or doing any type of thing with camera, any lights in the background will darken the image out here. So I do have enough lights surrounding me, to typically a street light and a security light behind me to the, to the left. Uh, that's uh, lighting the scene up enough uh, so that we can film. And I do have a light on the camera itself. Uh, the screen uh, in this direction lights up as a white light, uh, shedding some light onto the scene so it provides a better uh, exposure. Uh, anyway, as I said, I do a lot of uh, background checking uh, into stories that uh, uh, Lionel talks about. And as I said, I use Lionel as, as a litmus test. I'm not criticizing him. This isn't, you know, me, oh, such a, Lionel is such a blah, 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 blah. You know, this is observation. It, it, this is what it is. And the thing is, is that, it, it, you know, Lionel is, it, is saying, well, that YouTube is over. Well, YouTube has been in this situation before. If you've been around YouTube long enough uh, to remember the days of the uh, Review Girls, there was a similar battle over, over YouTube, and you know there's a lot of fighting, a lot of drama, and same thing with Hank Green in terms of his uh, he's the one who set, sets up a uh, 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 VidCon, VidCon. Was his thing, and then they had all the cons. They had, they had uh, the beauty con. They had um, playlists that, that all these sort of creators were going to. This is the heyday of of vlogging, and I think things always work in trends. But I think if, if you're a person who wants to follow trends, you know, go ahead and do that. Follow the trend, and then that's what happens. You have this uproar. The trend, the trend drops off, and something else picks up. I mean, because then you had uh, uh, the screaming and yelling of Alex Jones and he before he actually got kicked off of YouTube uh, he was for more than a year saying how he's going to get kicked off but every time he did it nothing really happened and <laughs> that, well, here's, the, here's the problem 
pundits are, are often right about certain things. Again, they're, they're, they are, in many ways, conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories are not totally wrong. What happens is they get a large chunk of their their uh, understanding of the situation wrong. So the information, some of the information they bring forward could be exactly true. And mm-hmm. Spot on, they are seeing the iceberg that they're about to hit. Mm-hmm. But the conclusions of what's going to happen are completely missed. Uh, and things take a lot longer to unfold than uh, typically the uh, conspiracy theorist likes to believe. And this is the same thing too with the climate, the climate conspiracy the conspiracy theorists. The uh, the ice in both an- on the poles, Antarctic and and so on and so forth, uh, we're imminently melting. You know, we have massive floods. And the, the what's that's amazing the the, the same. Stuff unedited that was produced in the 1990s and, and paraded around as climate disaster, climate end of the earth type of thing, like showing uh, uh, you know New York on New York City underwater and so on and so. Forth. <laughs> you know, this is what they were. This is what was imminently going to happen in 1990. Uh, well, 2020 comes along. 2020. This is uh, keep our math simple. It's uh, that's uh, 30 years have gone by. And it's the same old meme, same old trope coming out. We've got to prevent our te- the temperatures from one, rising from 1. Uh, 1. 1.5 5 degrees Celsius, or the whole world is going to be flooded. And this is so you have of all these so-called woke activists. And these are the, the blind agents in many cases. Uh, this will kind of lead in today's t- into today's topic of blind agents. Blind agents are the people who believe. There are something. There is something known as control agents. These are the con- agents who use the blind agents uh, to uh, uh, to shift and direct public opinion in, in various different ways. This is how a work occurs: is you have to have, well, you have to have two opposing players uh, who don't necessarily understand things, but in many cases, they are blind agents. They go along with what they believe, but then you have control behind it. The control. Uh, understands the work, understands the meme to, to some degree. But what happens is because all the control agents have their own particular agendas, there is no fundamental script they're actually working from. This is true in, in many cases, uh, going to sort of works and scripts, like uh, going to Mork and Mindy with uh, Robin Williams and uh, uh, Jonathan uh, uh, Jonathan Winters. Uh, who, who, this is an old TV show. Uh, they were of the caliber where they really couldn't be scripted. They... they would more often not ad lib and add their own lines in. They would, they would sort of modify the script. Uh, this is what uh, they call impromptu or improv. Improv is the creation of a script of a work uh, without any prior uh, pushes. In other words, they take the scene for where what it is, and then then they create from there on out. And the other player, the other actor, uh, jumps in and sort of. Picks up the cues from the initial initial uh, uh, improv actor, and then begins his improv, and they start feeding off each other. So the work is sort of called a dynamic. It, well, it's a dynamic work because it's not it's not pre written, it's not pre scripted, uh, and that's what prescription medicine is. It's pre written. So the doctors really, in many cases, were were never designed to have what's called diagnostic control. They ended up with diagnostic control. But now that's being removed from them. The, the doctors no longer have di- have diagnostic control. Things are now pr- more prescriptive. The more technology you have in there, the less you need the doctors. And from there, from the the top scientist perspective, and everything is going to be hunky dory. Uh, but where he gets, you know, so the blind angels, blind angels are, are are controlled by control agents. This is what G- GCHQ is, and in, in, in the, the GCHQ, that's James Bond. That was intelligence. James Bond was the person who went out and did the actual work, but there was always an agent Q who was the control. They controlled that particular station. And it was their job to achieve certain um, items on a list of to-do for intelligent work. And uh, 
uh, they're the ones who, they're the ones who control things. But the, but they understood that the the agent in the field would have to be in many cases be improv, and this is some cases <clears throat> for the the, for the the likes of Q. You would actually have to have agents go rogue and claim that they've gone rogue in order to achieve a particular objective. So in other words, a rogue agent is not necessarily a rogue agent. They're a rogue agent that has never been officially told to go rogue, but went rogue, got the job done that was needed to get done, and is now taking the fall for the thing rather than having the control agent take the fall. Uh, and this is what helps us, you know, talk about the Delta Force and stuff like that. The people who, who provide the, what we call the frontline security, who go out and do the dirty work, are the, are, are the most expendable people on the force. They're not the high ups. And a lot of times, this is what happens, is that in order to, and this is what's happening in the Alec Baldwin case, why go after this particular prop master? Well, because it's easy. No one in the higher ups are, is getting hurt. They're taking, they're taking aim at someone else who doesn't necessarily matter. These are the people who are expendable. These, in the case of these, these are the pawns in chess. Yeah, for some reason, Lyle doesn't seem to understand this, and I went today to sort of peruse uh, what Lynn's warriors are doing. It, I, 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 I applaud the effort that they're putting in, but at the same time. They're not making a dent. They're hit. They're hitting the wrong targets. They're like B, uh, BLM and Antifa. The good ideas, you know, get, you know, deal with, with the issues with the police, and there are a lot of issues with the police. I mean, it, it, today we're reading about, you know, a, uh, a Marshall SWAT team that uh, uh, that sort of uh, oops wrong address type of thing, but never admitted it, and they went they went in to a house with a wife uh, with a mother and a baby. And they had the guns. You hear this on, on camera, on, on the security camera, showing the officers pointing a loaded gun. Several officers pointing at a loaded gun, uh, uh, at a mother and a baby. Uh, the person they were looking for wasn't there. They actually ended up having the wrong address. And but so, sorry, <laughs> you know, they left no notice. No, so they get a letter in the mail. So sorry about this. But the thing is, is that you know. The person now who, who they did this to now has trauma. The kid can't sleep at night. and But, oh, sorry about that, you know. Oops. <laughs> we, we've got people now in positions who are fundamentally dangerously stupid. <laughs> and there is, there, the, the system is in such a, such a mess. There's no way, to, there's no simple fix to this. It, it's... It, it, basically needs a reset. Um, the defund the police should not be simply defund the police, but rather a reset of the security system that people have in place for for for, for unarmed citizens, for, for, for average citizens. Right now, we've got a paramilitarized situation in which the police are behave like these uh, uh, yahoos. They're, 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 they're idiots. They're morons by definition, and there is a definition: to idiot and moron. Idiots and morons by definition are people who cannot think. They have no sense of logic. This is why the top doctors and scientists at the time in the eighteen hundreds and the in, in, into the early nineteen hundreds considered women to be feebly minded. Feebly minded is a state of high functioning moron by definition. This is you can find this. You you have to go back to an older dictionary. Typically, one that's not online. If you can find older dictionaries, uh, 19, 1960 and prior, uh, you may find them at an old, uh, used bookstore if you can, if they're still around. Pick them up. Go take a, take a look at these de definitions. It takes a bit of a, dig, a bit of a dig to understand this. Uh, they weren't in terms of insults. They were actually legal definitions as to the mental capacity of a particular person. If you're classified as a moron, idiot, feebly minded, you cannot take care of yourself. This is what was deemed, and this is what you see with uh, 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 Britney Spears' conservatorship, is that she was deemed not, mental, mental, not mentally capable of taking care of herself, and so therefore she had to have a conservator, someone who would, who would take care of her, and that, of course, meant taking care of her money as well. This was used in, in many cases for, for widows and orphans, for, 
uh, people who ended up having money left to them by parents who became deceased. You want to in interrupt that will. You want to grab that money for yourself or you declare them incompetent. You declare them morons. You declare them uh, so on and so forth, uh, you know, that, so that you would be able to get control over these particular assets. Uh, and you would have a judge or some other doctor who uh, could easily be bought off. And there are a number of these cases. Uh, and you would have them sign these particular documents. You give them their pay, uh, whatever they were sort of asking for that you, or they agreed to. And you would get control of the estate and that particular money and so on and so forth. This is not, again, so, so not something new, something old, uh, but often forgot about in history because it's never really brought up. People toss around the term idiot and moron way too lightly. Uh, it's not an insult. There's actually a definition. There's a reality behind it. But like, once again, this is, is ignored. It's not brought up by Lionel. He doesn't go into the definition of these things. He doesn't go into the history of these things. But since this stuff is too complex, he'd rather go in depth, do the deep research dive on his private channel. And this is why he considers YouTube to be the, uh, well, the uh, bowels uh, of the social uh, media world. Doesn't see any any value in it. He calls it drek and, well, these are old people terms for poop and shit and whatever. <laughs> uh And he, 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 he can do whatever he wants to do, but this, this is where it pins him as an intellectual, is he's got his own particular views on things uh, as an intellectual and considers everyone else to be stupid. And he, he's, not using, he's not using stupid and idiot as a definition by people who can't think. He, it's just an out, it's an out and out insult. And it, and, it's, it's, and it reflects his position of superiority uh, over others, or more, a lot of others, in his position of correctness. But the thing is, is I've gone through his Twitter, I've gone through Mrs. L's Twitter, and said, I, I don't doubt that these are nice people. And I also don't doubt that they're well-meaning people, but she's hit the wrong target. And then you have, you have these whole Senate hearings on big tech are all because of, you know, all because of Mrs. L. She's been lighting the fires and making the phone calls. So they found it a popular thing to do. But I think at the same time, as Mrs. L. having this big thing, this thing focused on big tech, which is great in the media because you have big this and big that, and you have a single identifiable target, you're creating a monster. What's happening? Well, on the border, nothing's happening. You're having thousands of people come through Thousands of children be, being trafficked. Thousands of children being trafficked. 95,000 95, children being lost within the CPS system uh, for uh, uh, for these migrant children. Completely lost. They have no idea where they are. And it's still going on. More 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 people are coming in. So it hasn't talked. It hasn't changed at all. Nothing's changed. The senators are talking big. They're taking they're taking shots at easy targets that will. Well, that will occur, that will amount to nothing. They haven't identified how these targets should be hit. They haven't even gone on to these social media sites that say they're doing these things and actually identified specific targets. I did it. I found very specific targets that you could hit. But, you know, of course, they don't listen. Because going after a specific target is a difficult thing to do, and it doesn't generate a lot of press. What does generate a lot of press, what does give you your TV interviews, what does give you your TV show, or even if it's live streaming and stuff like that, are the concept of big tech. And RT does, the same, RT does the same thing. RT, which is a good source, does the exact same thing. It talks about these sort of uh, big this and big that. And, you know, they have the uh, big corporate media. Well, of course, you know, you know the, the Republicans talk about the big communist me media, the big, so uh, the big socialist media. Uh, the Democrat-controlled media, and so on and so forth, and people don't realize that, again, all this stuff is a work. CVD is a work. The vaccines are a work. And if you read Davos, you read the Great Reset, the, the, the sort of think tanks coming out of the UN and stuff like that, you'll find a lot of the stuff are all works, that these are nerds playing games. It's nothing more than QLARP. That's what QLARP, uh, no, nothing, well, that's what it's QLARP, uh, a form of QLARP, or 
in a form of QLab, uh, you know, the, the live action role play, but using uh, government and Intel for it. Well, this is this is what, what QAnon was. QAnon was that. You also have people coming into these groups who are agents and double agents and uh, blind agents and control agents. I mean, could no one figure out going into uh, just like Maxwell's Maxwell's uh, background that just like Maxwell wasn't the wasn't a blind agent? She was a control. You will look at the definition of what a blind agent is and go into what a control agent is. We'll see that Mac, just like Maxwell was not a a happenstance victim of the situation. She wasn't simply there. She was control. She was the one running the thing. But she protected herself. Another thing is because this stuff gets connected to the government, to, to the senators themselves. Uh, she got a lot of protection that the basically the people, the the girls who were being trafficked didn't have. And what happens is that the way they view this whole thing with the trafficking of of women and children. And you revert refer to it in terms of the business term. That the people who die in transit is this is your commodity loss. Commodity loss. In other words, whenever you transport any form of good or or whatever merchandise a certain portion of it is going to be lost. It's understood. This is part of doing business. This is why you have insurance. This is why you have a lot of different things that, that involve, you know, raising the price at the end at the retail level, given when it's go through wholesalers, so on and so forth. There's always this transport cost. There's always there's risk that you have a loss of commodity in transport. Things get damaged, so on and so forth. And a large chunk of the bodies that they're finding, and they're finding more bodies with this market, Ryan Landry thing. They didn't simply find uh, Gabby Petito's body. They found other bodies as well. And instead of looking into the human trafficking, they diverted into the whole thing of of Brian Brian Landry. Again, LeBron does not differentiate himself from these conspiracy theories. He has his own conspiracy theory, but it doesn't differentiate. It doesn't go into why Brian Landry is, is is not a suspect. I mean, I think he's dead. They found he's dead. They did the they did the jaw inspection. Oh, you never know. What we mean, you never know. Dental identity. When you are identifying a person by dental records, you have a certain dental records are almost like a fingerprint. And this is how, they, in many cases, when the when the body is skeletal, there's almost nothing left to to do forensic testing on. You go to the dental records, the dental records will give you a match as to who, a fingerprint as to who the person is. This is how good dental records are. And they, by dental record, identified Brian uh, Laundry as the body in Florida. He did not have enough of a packing material to say he was going. He, he was running away. Yeah, the, oh, he was running away. Well, how do you know? What was the materials that he was carrying? What, what, what materials was he, was he carrying? Didn't describe it. It looked like he was just there with a backpack, which means he was out maybe for one to maybe two days and or even less. He was just going out for a hike. A person who hikes a lot, I hike a lot, you just go out for no particular reason. You know, pick a time, okay? And then maybe within five minutes, ah, let's go hiking. You realize, you know, you got time free and uh, you have nothing left to do, so right, let's go for a hike. And in the hike, it, when I mean when I hike, I mean three, four, five, six. Seven hours of hiking on a whim. Because that's just the way it is. You get this, this sort of wander, wander lust, lust where, where you have these itchy feet and you want to walk around. Uh, and it's nice going for a hike. It's not, you know, even in the city, you, you, you go for the very long walks. The Greeks uh, call it a volt. Uh, most of the older Asian countries all have it where the people walk around for no particular reason. They're just going out for a walk. And this is what this guy Brian Laundry did. Of course, he ended up in, he ended up in, in in a body of water. They didn't say exactly what type of body of water, and all they found was skeletal remains, and it had to be identified by uh, his uh, his jaw, I mean, with uh, dental uh, dental records. So, you know, none of this was ever brought up. None of this was ever examined. 
and the thing is that other women were involved and were other were, were taken like this. I mean, it's like this, they're completely clueless, clueless as to what's going on. Yet you can see most of what's going on on either Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. You can see what type of parties are going on, and then from there you can go over to other apps like Telegram to really find some of the some of the nitty gritty, including the, some of the stuff that's popping up from uh, the dark web. So you can follow these tracks. You can follow. The, the lines of, of of evidence to find something specific, but it's not being done. So I'm sorry to say, you know, she's maybe she's trying her best. But I laud her for that, for Mrs. L. But uh, she's going in the wrong direction. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to be it for now, and I will uh, talk to you probably tomorrow night. We'll see where the uh, uh, the vlog goes, the verbal essay goes, so you start at a particular point and have no idea where you're going to end up. <laughs> All right, take it easy. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School 